Father, I bless you and thank you that before the foundation of the world, you knew that we would gather here this morning. And that even though men pondered their ways, you ordered their steps. Yes, Lord. So what you determined to do before the foundation of the world, we say to you, not our will, yes. thy will be done. Yes, sir. We ask for the power of the Holy Ghost to move within the hearts and minds of every person under the sound of my voice. And Lord, I'm asking you, exalt the name of your son greater than every name that is named today. Greater than the president's name. My father. Greater than the disease's name. Oh, yeah. Gre greater than the names of economic uh, upheaval and inflation. That at your name, every knee must bow. Yes. Every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. To the glory of God our Father. Amen. Thank you so much, God, Thank for what you're so determined much. to do today. Oh, yeah. We bless you and we bless the people. In Jesus' name, Jesus. I pray. Jesus. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Bless you. Well, first of all, I want to thank God for all of you. Please just bear with me if I don't acknowledge it in the proper manner that we do it. But I bless all of you. Bless you. And I consider it a privilege to be before you, no matter what your station. I would call this time of being with you, if you could bear with me, it's gonna be intense, I'll, I'll tell you that in advance. Yeah, Living life with eternity in view. Yeah. 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 I'll say that again. Living, Living life, life with eternity in, in view. That's all right, sir. Like Whoever is going to judge me ultimately, I must be dedicated to presently. Mm. Wow. Said another way, my present stewardship will determine my future responsibility. Since I know that this whole life is a tried life, meaning that the issue of, my, of race, gender, generation that we're living in is a sovereign issue. God determined what race we are. God determined what gender we are. God determined when we were going to live. And so I want God's mind and his understanding on number one, why did you make me? And number two, if the goal of God is Romans 8, 29, whom he did foreknow, then he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, how transformed am I? How close am I to being like your son? What gender is transformation? What educational level is Christ likeness? What's the economic level of being all in with God? So I thank the Lord for um, everything that Bush and Dean <coughs> Nelson is going to send him a seat. I understand this is a fundraising, so I want to get involved in it. So I, I've been in a lot of fundraisers, and I want to make sure that my part in it, which we do this, is a thousand dollars and Dean Nelson is going to do it I'm going to Bless definitely you. sow into this Bless because he represents something that God determined to do now I will say this I'm kind of like real straightforward you'll see it in a minute but Juanita Bynum yeah. in her meeting yeah. in St. Louis yeah. has a ten thousand dollar line yes, and that ten thousand dollar line is for people that want exceptionality yeah. they want to do things at a high level so she knows that your seed determines the future. If you have a small seed, you then think that you're gonna have a small future. But if you have a major seed, in terms of that, then you have a major future. That's how she sees it. I'm not saying that's how I see it, because I believe our whole life is a seed life. You and I are not going to live forever in the natural. But we are getting a body that, the said in 2 Corinthians chapter five, that's being made for us now, by God. So that this body right here, and this life right here, is not suitable, this, watch, this body for the next world. That's why it's limited wow. by longevity. And so yes, there's sicknesses, there's, there's, there are funerals, there are people who die, but you and I don't die. The only thing that is ordained to live forever in this life is you and me. The issue is where? 
What I want to talk about is if you're born again, the issue is not going to heaven. The issue is what you're capable of doing in the next world and where you're going to be placed. So the issue is placing. So, so I want to read the scripture here and then I got a launch because I did. I was asked uh, a certain length of time and that's what I got. So, and that's what I'm going to do in terms of it. And if you want more, then you got to find me. And you got to find me. And so I'm going to cut it off when I cut it off. And that's just really what it is. It's what it is. Okay? And, and my heart cried in terms of the black community is there hasn't been a major transformational move of God in our country in a hundred years. Revival services is not necessarily transformation of people. And so this, this man who comes from a racist environment uh, named Daddy Seymour leads that and then starts a prayer meeting in, Atlanta, in, in, in Los Angeles and he said the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is unity of the saints. And in that meeting the bloodline was covered in the blood of Jesus. We, blacks are being taught right now that you're not to take this stuff anymore from white people. Women are being taught right now that you're not to take that stuff from men anymore. And I want to just say to you that your goal is not what you're going through, but how you go through it. The issue is not what you have, but what you can handle. And your placement in the next world is not only based on the propitiatory death of Jesus Christ, but how you function in the light of that in this world. There is no other opportunity. If you miss it here, that's it. And so we got to get it. Now, so I'm going to say a couple things in relation to history, but I want to read you a scripture first in Matthew 19. And it's Jesus in verse 16 is talking about to this rich man who came to Jesus and asked him the question, what must we do to have eternal life? I say a better translation would be to have eternal living because you're already gonna live forever. I already mentioned that. So now how do you live like it's gonna be in the next world? And then if I were to ask you to raise your hands and ask how many of you are gonna to go to heaven if you all raise your hands and all of us are gonna to go to heaven, then all God needs to do is to transfer us to the next world and heaven looks like us. <laughs> that means how we think, how we talk, how we treat one another, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Not as it's going to be, but as it is in heaven. So every part of you that doesn't fit into the next world is going to be consumed by the fire of his presence. It's clearly wood, hay, and stone. What we got to cultivate is gold, silver, precious stones. Meaning, what part of the word of God, not that you've heard, but you've adhered to, so that you are like God naturally. Because that's as to who you are. Being born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the word of God. So you're here not just to be famous or not just to be popular or not just to be, you know, someone that's important. You're here to fulfill a divine mandate to grow to this place called glory. Because he says uh, he's going to return for a glorious church and he defines it that has not spot nor wrinkle nor any such thing. Now I'm going to be honest with you, most Christians I know have spots and wrinkles and all kinds of things. And the preachers justify it by saying I'm just human. And consequently, the Holy Ghost didn't come just to keep you human. Right. He came to get you Christ-like. Yes, yes, and then he said, be you imitators of God. Now, what is that? Just, just bear with me for a minute. So God creates Adam in his image after his likeness and says to him four things. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. Yeah. One man was ordained by God, listen, to run a planet. Yes, yes. yes sir. One man was made to be in charge of the whole planet. And, and then God says, says in, 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 in Genesis chapter 2, and God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into the nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So, so look at this. So who are you talking to, God? 
before chapter 2 and verse 7. Well, who are you talking to? When you gave him that responsibility, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. Because he hadn't made the man physically yet. Because that's what we see in chapter 2, verse 7. Right, right. So here's the point. First revelation, then formation. Mm. See? Because God is a spirit. They that worship God must worship him in spirit and truth. So it's who you are in the invisible world. In secret, when nobody's looking. Your yeah. inner thoughts. When wars begin, do not begin within your members. Everything that's going on in the world began on the inside of somebody where nobody can see it but God. You and I are called to be like God by ordination. So guess what? Adam was put over the whole world, the whole earth, but he starts him out in the garden. So here was the point. His present stewardship in the garden becomes his future responsibility. So instead of being promoted out of the garden, he was driven out of it. So that through his failure, the whole earth became our present nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because God allowed his progeny to continue to develop. Adam sinned. He said, you'll die. If you eat off this tree, you're going to die. Well, Adam died by disobeying God, but one of his sons becomes a murderer. Here's the point. You reproduce after your kind. Yeah. It's a law of creation. And so when you get down to Acts 17, 26, which brings us to where we are now, he says he's made of one blood all nations on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. So what's he saying? We all came from Adam. But I don't want to participate in Adam's failure. Jesus comes in 1 Corinthians 15 as the last Adam. And where the first Adam failed, Jesus, the last Adam, succeeded. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when he was tempted, that first Adam was tempted in the garden, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Then Jesus, after he goes public in Luke 3.21 and says, God validates him in his baptism. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit then drives him to the wilderness. Now what the seeds of America isn't handling well is the wilderness of life. So as, they, as they're challenged by the devil, as Jesus was challenged, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, because he comes as the last Adam. So he has to begin his ministry right there. So he beat the devil in the wilderness. But after, watch this, he had fasted 40 days. God will never do anything great to anybody around their convenience. He always does it around your sacrifice. Gather the saints unto me, them that did a covenant with me by sacrifice. Yes, now, I can take you to Colossians chapter 3. I can take you to 1 Peter chapter 2. In both those cases, God tells through Paul and Peter, slaves how to be a good slave, not how to get out of slavery. <laughs> oh, yeah, you shot me down now. See, you see what I'm saying? He tells the slave master how to treat the slave, not how to let him go. Why? Because this life was not about what's going on in this life. It's, a, it's about how you handle this life for the sake of promotion in the next life. Look at it, look at it. It's amazing if you look at scripture and find out what's the end of this thing. What's the end? What, where are we headed? Where are we going? What's, what's, what's God doing, putting up with? Look, Spurgeon prayed the prayer, Lord, pity the poor rich. Right. He, he realized one of the great challenges of Philemon is he didn't know why he was rich. Right. So Onesimus gets caught stealing, gets in jail, meets Paul while he was in jail. Paul disciples him to a level where he was Philemon's level. Paul sends him back to the person he had issue with as a slave and tells Philemon, treat him like you treat me. So he sends the slave back to the slave master and then he sends to the slave master the slave and he said, both of you are my sons. Philemon used the slave. Onesimus, whose name means profitable, 
could handle being used. This is what we're dealing with right now. First Corinthians chapter 1 talks about not many wise are called, not many base are called, but I've called the base things of the world to confound the wise. Yea, to bring to naught the things which are. He says in, in Romans chapter 9, he says, And Pharaoh have I raised up for this same purpose that I may show forth my glory. God raised Pharaoh up to slam him so that he can show Israel that you only get to where you get to by my sovereignty. What the challenge is for the black race is they seem to be led more into their culture rather than to the kingdom. Amen. It's all right to be culturally conscious, but not to be culturally controlled. I don't get my worldview from my culture. I get my worldview from being seated with him in heavenly places where I can view all things and see the big picture. From my culture, I'm just looking out horizontally and I can't see the big picture. To put a puzzle together, you've got to be above it. We're letting too many things be equal to us when we should be above it. I can't I can't even go into these notes that I have to I don't, I don't have but a few minutes. Well, so I gotta go ahead and on with it. He told me how long I have, so I gotta find another five minutes with it. So I gotta go. I can't look at the notes right now. So, this book, Charles Darwin, Origin of Species, if I ask the average student, which we're coming up, Black History Month is coming up, if I ask the average student, white or black, what's the subtitle of the book, Origin of Species? Most people think that book is, is a book about evolution versus creationism. That, wrong. The subtitle is the indicator. What is it? The preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. That book is about eugenics. It's not about event evolution versus creationism. Because why? He's a product, Darwin, of Malthus, of Francis Galton, who were eugenicists. And the woman that was able to take that eugenicist premise out into practicality was the founder of Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger. Yeah. Uh, She's a eugenicist. She believes that there is one race that was born that's noble in birth, another race that's ignoble in birth, and the noble in birth must survive. The ignoble in birth are the consumers. They must die. Yeah. That's why you see that those Planned Parenthood bases are set up in mostly black communities. That's right. Because they devalue the black community, and the scam is blacks have bought into it. Margaret Sanger, right? Read the book, The Pivot of Civilization. Read the Breath Control Review. That was her magazine. She has an old issue dedicated to the Negro problem. Because she didn't see black people prophetically. She saw them out of a eugenicist mindset. But here's the problem right now. Blacks are participants in their own genocide. Wow, Bishop. Wow, you can put a political title on it. You can put a, the issue of, uh, of, of being taken advantage of. All this you want, but you've got to keep it between you and God. I mean, the situation I'm in right now. I come down for this man right here who sees me with the eyes of revelation. It's a Latino church. I don't think there's any African Americans in that church. He says two things. Number one, I want to make sure that at the end of your life, you don't have to be concerned about finances because you got to get the word out. Number two, you got to not die and take what God has shown you to the grave. We want what you have. Could you come down here? So I moved from Atlanta eight months ago down here to Miami to his church. Those people are hungry like you can't believe. I mean, one service is in English. The other service is, in, is being interpreted. But those people run me down. So I said, he said, well, look, I don't want to take you off your schedule because I was going before COVID back to Germany to help Merkel, Chancellor Merkel, with conflict resolution over there with the Syrian refugees. They were giving the Germans help. Why? I finished high school in Germany. I understood that the, the Syrian refugees were ghetto and gutter like me. So I understood how you have to treat them, how you can bring them around. 
They couldn't, they weren't, and they're still not today. And so I would go over there, I, I, East Germany, I found the location yeah. where the first missionaries were sent out in East Germany by Ludwig van Zinzendorf. Yes, I recall, he's van Zinzendorf. The Moravians, yeah, they have a big Dutch flag. So I'm going back and forth over there, and, and I knew that the black community, instead of being missionaries, they're still a mission field. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. And so going, still a being missionaries, they're still a mission field. They got us so self-conscious of our particular economic situation, or our value, you can't devalue me. You can call me black, nigger, colored, stupid, all you want. I would look around and wonder who you're talking to. Because you can't redefine me, I've already been defined by God. I'm laying in his image. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then by calling me on that, you prove I should be your daddy. Don't stop. Don't stop. And I ended up serving on boards. I can call them out right now. Of white major organizations, white economic, the number one economic organization in this country in terms of Christian is ECFA. Served on that board. Same thing I'm talking. I'm talking biblical premises to them. You understand? And on and on I could go into this thing. But I understand that I don't want you to miss God in this. God says promotion comes not from the east nor the west. No, the south. I'm the judge. I lift one up, I take another down. See, eternity has him. Uh -huh. Eternity is in your heart. So he's doing what God decides him to do. What God is looking at is not how he's governing the people, but how he's living while governing them. Amen. All the judgments of God, Revelation 21, 8, that, that says, of oh, the fearful, the unbelieving, the liars, the murderers, the corners, all that, all those are character issues. You'll never be judged in the next world by the size of your ministry. No, sir. Well, by how much money or the size of your mailing list. You're going to be judged by behavior. Eternity reward is based on behavior. Right. Behavior that's for the next world. So this is what I wrote in the book, Your Wife is Not Your Mama. And look, I, if they didn't bring those books, I wouldn't bring them up to you. I mean, in reality right now, I'm, I know I'm an unknown in their terms. Of, I don't care. Because God doesn't judge by size. A remnant is keeping everything together right now in this country and most of the world. It's the dedicated. I know that consecration uh, is the missing ingredient of the church right now. We don't know how to cultivate aloneness, being alone. We don't know. Before I ever spoke in Promise Keepers with 80,000 men, 70,000 men, you can go on Google. I've done 50 stadium events for Promise Keepers. But before I ever did that, I'd gone away for nine straight years and did 40 day fast alone where nobody could reach me. Why? Because I knew that the great reformers of the Bible, Elijah, Moses, and Jesus, all did 40 day fasts. Because wow. we fast. So I said, look, I, I don't need promotion by man. All I need is to satisfy God, and I'm going to live till it's over. Yes, sir. But when it's over, death is a portal into the next world. Why would I fear death when Jesus already conquered death? Oh, sure. All these people that are scared of the disease? Wow. You're, scared, you're scared of a virus? Oh, right. yeah, get out of here, man. I'm not afraid of the dying of disease. You can't kill me out of the sin, surrendered life until God is finished with me. Yes, sir. And when he is finished with me, I'm out of here. Yes, other than that, I'm gone. So let me finish this up by just saying, why wouldn't Miami and you be the people that's going to make the difference for the generation? Now, yes. If you read the 19th chapter, 1927, when Peter makes this statement, he says, we've given up all to follow you. He asked the question then, what shall we get? Now, I've got to read that to you because this is only one of two places that he tells them where you're going to be placed in the next world. Uh -huh. So I got another series of messages called Next World Understanding. Uh -huh. yes. Just what it is. I, I found that I don't have to, I mean, I did, I was visited by the Shekinah the glory of God. My mama was Kojic, you know, in terms of that. Uh, the, I'm going to do a shut-in. Now watch this. I, I did it. This man, A.D., 
uh, Pastor Lenore came to the meeting that I, I told uh, uh, Bishop Joaquin, I said, look, I can't transfer to you in a 45 minute or 50 minutes. So he, 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 I mean, I, I got you to preach as long as I want. And then, but I said, I need more time. I need like eight hours. Yep. <laughs> so then he comes back two weeks later. He says, I got it. So what? He says, the eighth month, August, the eighth day, eight hours. Wow. The Sunday. He brings his whole church on a Sunday. And, and because it was going to be too many people, we, he got, he rented Trump. The resort. And there were those people loaded in there, hungry for the word. I gave them eight hours. Now, there was some like praise and worship and some other things. I would have taken the whole eight hours just like right now. And if I go, can go eight hours, you know, like whatever I got right now. It's like, you can't, I can't. Secondly, I want to say, I, and then he says to me, well, why don't you do a 10-10? I said, what? He says, 10 month, 10 day, 10 hours. I went down to Virginia Beach, a church let me. On a Sunday, I did 10 hours. I met them at 6 a.m. in the morning for leaders that wanted to get with me and I can pray them through some stuff they can't talk to anybody else about. I did that and then started at 10 o'clock, ministered the word till 8 o'clock that night. Now, if Jesus can preach for three days, I can do 10 hours. <laughs> so then I really felt that wasn't enough, so I got a shut in this month on the 20th to the 22nd in Clinton, North Carolina, yes, sir. where I'm going to spend three days. Thursday, 12 o'clock, to Saturday, 12 o'clock. Now, the biblical example for it is you've been with me now three days. This is not a complete three days. This is just touching three days with me. But for three days, I'm going to unload. Because yes, yeah. for me, I didn't do those fasts and dig in here and get the Holy Ghost those books, if you write them, if you read them, you'll find, I'm not trying to, uh, if you don't get located, if you don't get, like, offended, then the book isn't authentic. It's not legitimate. You have to be located somewhere. There has to be some place you get found that you're not, and that place becomes a demarcation for a new level of dedication in your life. That's why I'm having this shut-in. And if you'll notice, the 120 in the upper room was a shut-in, 10-day shut-in. It was all leaders. It was disciples. The Azusa Street, who passed that Azusa Street with Daddy Seymour, was leaders. I can tell you, John G. Lake took that to the building I was going to buy, the new event since the in East Germany. John G. Lake started the church from a man in South Africa, that's the Moravians, who bought a building in East Germany. I located that building and was going to buy that building to start a crowd meeting on a move of God in East Germany that would penetrate all of Europe. Mm. Not done with it yet. So now I come here. I'm going to finish. I came here, and my wife fell one time or twice in a bathroom, and I said, "Let me take her to the doctor." So, um, Marquine is an attorney. His daddy is a medical doctor. His brother is a head of doctor. They doctors. They fat boys over there. They fat boys. Yes, okay. yes, so I went to the doctor. The doctor said, "If I do an X-ray." Uh, it'll take two days to get the results back. Why don't you take her to Baptist Hospital? They'll do an x-ray, an MRI, and it'll take two hours. So I took her there to do MRI. They couldn't find anything. She hasn't left the hospital since May. She now doesn't walk, don't talk, don't feed herself, don't, um, can't dress herself, can't go to the bathroom by herself. She has a feeding tube. And it just so happened that on our 48th wedding anniversary, on November the, uh, the 24th, I usually buy her a rose for every year we've been married. Now let me just underscore this with you guys who are pastors and you got wives and you're doing ministry. If I can't make one woman happy, if revival, the proof, the proof, the full, the first proof of the, the validity of my personal devotion to God is if I can blow one woman's mind. <laughs> there ain't no way I don't have enough of God to make one woman happy. But it won't be cheap grace. It costs something to make that woman happy. 
Even though I'm continuing, even though she's lying on her back, I brought her 48 roses. She hadn't talked to me. I didn't know what was going to happen with her laying there. And I, I, I happened to video and I brought. I said, "Baby, I, I, you know, I didn't. You've been a great woman. I don't. God is with us." And I'm still your husband laying there. You're still my wife laying there. I still love you. You've been a great mother. Every I love you, woman. And then uh, she then looks into the thing and she says, I love you. I'm gonna blow her mind from the cradle to the grave. All right. Why? Because how I run my house is how I would run a world. So good. You hear what I'm saying here? So let me just finish reading this one verse to you. Just please. One verse. I, I'm, I'm actually gonna finish. I hate even talking about finishing. But, I, but I'm, I'm gonna do it. This is what I want you to see. That's what I'm saying for you. Don't let anybody rob you of this right here. Don't yes, let them rob you. When I talk to the white community, which I'll probably be talking to some universities yes, on this, the white community in America don't know why God made them. They don't understand why they have money, why they have education, why they have the freedom they've had, why we become the global nation. The power to live. The American Missionary Association knew that after emancipation, after the 1877 Compromise, those teachers from the North, 2,000 of them came to the South and took blacks in slavery from 99% illiteracy, illiteracy to 80% literacy in 35 years. These are mostly white people. The Whigs, which were Republicans of yesterday, are not the same as the Republicans of today. They're not the same. They don't get it. They don't get it. Democrats clearly don't get it either. They don't get it. We live our lives as unto God, not as unto people. We, it's God's standard that we represent. Yes, sir, Bishop. No nonsense person that don't even know who they are. Somebody call yourself like gay or you call yourself uh, homophobe or, 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 or transvestite. They're ungodly or not so. That, those words don't exist in the economy of God. God didn't make a trans. Those words don't even exist. God does not acknowledge no trans word. That's not a legitimate word. In the economy of God. You'll be ungodly. You're not so. Nonsense. Nonsense. But yeah, we're so weakened that the Supreme Court and the Congress <laughs> would let those people put pressure on them to make a decision that would be against God. That's what the rich man did. Jesus said, go sell everything you have and come and follow me. He was invited to become a disciple. And he says he went away sad. He chose money rather than to be a disciple of Jesus. God was talking to him. It wasn't that he had money. Money had him. And then down in the end of this, which is what I wanted to read to you, is in Matthew 19, 27. Right. Please, right. Uh, here. It. it says here, and Peter said to him, we've given up everything to follow you. Right. That word is not the same as contemporary times. Right. He literally did give up. For three and a half years, Jesus was their priority of all those disciples. Right. Today, we can't even hardly get you out of the house. People shut the church down during the COVID. Yes. And that we're afraid that if we go to church, the people are going to get it. Well, if you go to church and they get it in church, then they die obeying God. Isn't that a good death? Say it. Say it. Say it. We're giving everything. That's giving everything right there. Bishop, Bishop, Bishop. And, this, and Jesus said, I assure you that when the world is made new, this is the point. Now watch this. When the world is made new and the Son of Man sits upon his glorious throne, so you look at this now. You who have been my followers will also look at this, sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Do you see that? He told those guys their assignment for the next world. 
In another place in Luke 22, he says the exact same thing. You're going to sit on thrones. So I'm saying, wait a minute. Those 12 disciples, why would those disciples judge the 12 tribes of Israel when they already had tribal leaders in the Old Testament? You know it. Because those tribal leaders knew about God. Those disciples knew God. Emmanuel, God with us. The issue of authority is an issue of proximity. How vital Christ is to you is your confidence. If you are not close to God, if the Holy Ghost is not your friend, if you don't know the voice of God, you are an Oscar level actor. And that's what I'm seeing right now in much of the church. They're acting this thing out, and so, and so here it is. And so, so in the next world, you're gonna have a throne. So now let me go all the way with you since it since this. All the way. Adam's children populated the earth. Right. Christ, the last Adam, is populating the heavens. All right. All right. Let me do a pause with you for a minute. You hear what I'm saying? God made Adam and his wife with his hands. Everybody else born was born through his hand at work. Okay. The union of the marriage bed. So that all of the children living today came through the progeny of somebody union properly in the marriage bed. So all the natural children of Adam is us or us. Now, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the word of God, all of us are born again. We are spiritual beings in a natural body. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We are made to populate the heavens. Read Daniel chapter 7, it said the angel of the days give the kingdom to the son, and the son is going to give the kingdom to the saints, and the saints shall possess the kingdom. So that all of creation, somebody is going to be in charge of. Jesus is going to be the head, but somebody made in the image of God, developed into a place of responsibility, is going to be over the rest of the creation. Now, this is what a lot of us don't get. You're playing for eternal stakes right here. If you die and you think that getting back people better off is the destiny, you think that social reform is what God wants you to do ultimately, is it? You're going to miss something. You've got to understand even angels are going to be under you because they aren't born again. You were born of the genetic seed of God. Angels were made by the hands of God. Wow. They'll always serve you. But not at your present level. If you, want. you can't tell angels what to do if you're not actually spiritual. You can't make the devil get out of the way if you don't access the heavens and that the devil actually hears God's voice when you talk to him. So my goal in that shutter, in you go on my site, runtomoon.com, those of you that want to come. This ain't no need-based thing. This ain't no like titles. This is going down. And I'll tell you right now, some of the people you know, DL Moody's. Northfield Revival and his Keswick Revivals, he brought together the greatest leaders in that day. They were looking for God in more vital way. They had to humble themselves to be there with. Even E.W. Kenyon was there with D.R. Moody. That he, was, he was led into the baptism of the Holy Ghost by Pearson. The present day people today don't talk about Moody being with Holy Ghost filled. And they call themselves evangelical without the Holy Ghost. I've spoken at the Southern Baptist Convention, the, the Southern Baptist Ministers Conference. I've done all of that. I'm still looking for, this is the judgment. If I can't find somebody more serious about God than I am, that's got to be a judgment. 
And then secondly, if somebody is running me down because of how serious I am about God, that's also a judgment. That's right. I pray that you put this man up here because he's a man of God Amen. and he won't compromise his standards. Amen. One last example, Mike, the former mayor of Dayton, Ohio, he's now head of the Intelligence Committee for the Congress in the, US, the United States. He invited me to do a prayer breakfast that turned into an explosive thing. And so many people got saved at that breakfast that he brought them to a promise keeper's meeting and showed them my seed. Now, I'm satisfied. If you're doing the will of God and you're standing there, I'm not coming. I don't, I don't, I'm not profiled. Now, I would say, I'm going to call y'all right now, but Kay James, who was over the Heritage president, she was, a, she was also uh, selected by Bush to be a personnel director. I could go into the White House anytime I want. I don't care about that. By me not being there, that's something they're missing. I mean, you got to come after me. I'm not going to come after you. You got to come after me. And if God doesn't let you know that somebody don't pray about God, then there's something you won't get. Not to just be able. God bless you. Bless you, man.